Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for tonight's edition of HR Mentorship Learning Series. Tonight, we'll be looking at a topic, workplace bullying. Workplace bullying. Our facilitator this evening is Mrs. Omolara Onikpedi, and I would like to read her profile very quickly so that we can get to know her better. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege and pleasure to have her as our facilitator for tonight. Omolara is a full member of the Association of Nigerian University Professionals Administrators. She joined Chara Institute of Personal Management in 2010 and have served in different capacities, both at the branch, zonal, and national levels. She possesses the HR Practitioner's License and is, a, and is passionate about career counseling, talent and career management, workplace diversity, inclusiveness and belongingness, employee engagement, strategic leadership, and branch development. At the moment, she's the branch chairman, Chartered Institute of Personnel Management for your state. Again, she's a professional career administrator with over 16 quality years experience with the University of Ibado, the first and the best. She had served and still serves the institution in various capacities. The bricks for her foundations were laid during her days at St. Louis Grammar School, a career where she obtained her senior secondary school certificate in the year 1991. She was also a labor prefect at St. Louis Akure, where she won several awards back in the days. Obra graduated from the University of Illori, better by far, in 1997 with a BSc in economics. She later backed a master's degree in personal psychology at the University of Ibadan in 2008. In pursuit of more knowledge, she obtained another master's degree in educational psychology and career counseling at the University of Ibadan just last year. Ladies and gentlemen, she's a lover of God. She enjoys meeting people, dancing, singing, and listening to music. She's married and blessed with lovely biological and non-biological children. It is my privilege and pleasure to present and hand over control of this virtual lecture to Mrs. Omolara Unipidi. Over to you now. Thank you very much, sir. Good evening, everyone. It is an honor and a great, a great privilege to be here. I am not taking it for granted. Thank you so much, ECM, Dr. Oluyemi Adeoshun, for this opportunity and for inviting me. Our engagement this evening is centered around workplace bullying. And this is a passion for me, I must confess, because I have once been a target, I have once been a victim of workplace bullying. But before I proceed, I would like us to have an engagement. Hence, I would want us to give me answers to the question I'm going to pose now. And that is, when was the first time or where was the first time you heard the word bully or bullying? So I want you to make your comments in the chat box. Was it in the family or at the family setting or in school? Because I know amongst siblings, there could be a bully. And also in school, there could be a bully. So I want to know where was the first place or the first time? When was the first time you heard that word? Kindly put that in the chat box while I proceed. Now, let me just say that these bullies have all grown up and now exist in the workplace or in the workplaces. Hence, it has become a subject of concern and a top priority for HR. And that is why we're going to consider this concept, workplace bullying. Apologies, please. Let me just mute this. All right. I'll go to the presentation outline. Tonight, we shall be considering workplace bullying, introduction, basic concepts of bullying and workplace bullying, otherwise known as WB, characteristics of bullying behaviors, forms of workplace bullying, Q 
key concepts about workplace bullying behaviors, types of workplace bullying, the effects of workplace bullying on an employee and the effects of workplace bullying on or at the workplace. Also, we shall be considering survival tips for dealing with a bully boss, the roles of the employer or management, the roles of the HR manager, then how do, you, how do we prevent workplace bullying? So we shall be looking at the prevention of workplace bullying. We shall consider some action plans and then we we'll conclude. So I want us to look at these images. Image A, you find a man, something has happened. Somebody has made him feel uncomfortable. Somebody has made him feel abnormal. He says, I'm tired. Image B talks about a lady. You can see her there. She opens up maybe her email and she's like, gosh. So I want you to put in the chat box, which one of these images suits you better? Like, do you see yourself as the man in the image A or the lady on the other side? Here is another one. This lady is saying, this is not funny. Somebody has made her feel this way. Somebody is making her feel this way. So she's saying, this is no longer funny. It's not getting funny. And the man in the D image says, not again. I want you to resonate with these images. At one time or the other, you have felt this way. Not again, not again. I'll move on. I'm trying to take off the dialogue, dialogue box so that I can have space. Okay, image E, this lady is saying, my supervisor hates me. My supervisor hates me. I don't know what I've done. It's like I'm running mad, I'm not myself. There's nothing I do that satisfies him. That is our expression. And you can see our colleague saying, it's, it's okay, take it easy, it's okay. On the other side, you have the image F, where you have a man. I'm sorry, I need to switch off the fan. I'm very sorry, please. I'm sorry, thank you. The image F, the man says, I can't move. I cannot move, I'm no longer myself. I can't move. Are you that person? Can you see yourself? Can you feel it? I can't move, it's fixated. I want you to think about these things. Introduction. Oh, oh, I'm having issues with this, okay? Okay, fine. Workplace bullying is in every organization and everyone had experienced it at one time or the other. It is sad that some organizations have a culture of bullying and the sadder part is that they do not do anything about it. It is more unfortunate that even the HR department or the HR manager does not always take action, making the bully more empowered. Hence, workplace bullying has become a growing concern, a silent epidemic, and a workplace issue. Contrary to the popular opinion, though, I mean, contrary to popular opinion, 
those who are target, targeted for bullying are not usually the loners and losers, but are most often your most productive, skilled, and popular team members. As a matter of fact, they are people that we, they are the sort of the earth people. They are the good people in the organizations. Often, the targets are the people with a high degree of integrity, honesty, and conscience who stand up for what is right, which may expose the less than ideal practices by other employees. So don't have that opinion that, oh, the loners, the losers, the low performing employees are the ones that are being bullied. In most of the cases, we have the sort of the earth people being bullied in the workplace. And bosses are the most common bullies. In fact, approximately, this is from research anyway, by the WBI, that's the Workplace Bullying Institute in the US, says in fact, approximately 72% of bullies outrank their victims. Bullying rarely comes from the bottom up. 56% of workplace bullying is perpetrated by bosses, according to the WBI survey. And it is difficult to confront someone in a position of power. You will agree with me on that um, report. What is bullying? Again, the Workplace Bullying Institute, WBI, defines bullying as repeated health-harming mistreatment of one or more persons, that is the target or the target, by one or more perpetrators, one or more perpetrators, that is the perpetrator or the perpetrators, that takes one or more of the following forms. Could be verbal abuse, offensive conduct, or offensive behaviors, including non-verbal, which are threatening, humiliating, or intimidating, or work interference, sabotage, which prevents work from getting done. Again, the Anti-Bullying Alliance in the UK defines bullying as the repetitive intentional hurting of one person or group of or group by another person or group where the relationship involves an imbalance of power. Bullying can be physical, verbal, or psychological. It can happen face-to-face -face or online. That was the definition given by the Anti-Bullying Alliance. Now, I'm sorry, there's an omission there. What is, okay, what the, what the workplace bully does? What the workplace bully does? We want to know what the workplace bully does. The bully tends to ingratiate himself with his bosses while intimidating subordinates. He may possess a kiss up, kick down personality, wherein he is always highly cooperative, respectful, caring when talking to upper management, but the opposite when it comes to his relationship with those whom he supervises. I hope you've, I know you've seen some of those people in the workplace or in our department. They tend to be nice when they see outsiders, maybe somebody from another department. They look so respectful. They look so, you know, they look so, they have this ebullence kind of character, I mean, personality. But within, within their workspaces, within their department, they are, it's just an opposite. As a consequence of this kiss up, kick down strategy, a bully keeps the target under constant stress withholds information from subordinates and keeps the information flow top down only. Blames conflicts and problems on subordinates, lack of competence, poor attitude or character flaws. Creates an unnatural work environment where people constantly walk on eggshells and are compelled to behave in a way they normally would not. A bully's mistakes are always concealed or blamed on underlining or circumstances beyond their control. And a bully's power base is fear, not respect. 
They always want to command fear at all times. You see a bully, when the bully is around, everybody behaves, you know, is like, a camouflage, everybody, there's no, nobody, it's a, it becomes an unnatural environment. And that is the strategy, the kiss up, kick down strategy. Now, what is workplace bullying? Because that's our focus this night, to, today, or tonight, sorry. It is the regular and repeated unreasonable action of individuals or a group of employees criticizing, Ignoring, belittling, undermining, oversupervising, overmanaging, humiliating, and, ridic and ridiculing of a person at work. It is intended to intimidate, humiliate, degrade, and undermine. The aim is to control their environment and to paralyze co workers. At this point, I want you to know that you have either been a bully at work or a target of bullying at work. You have either been there doing all that has been said, or you have been on the other side, on the recipient side, being the one that has that is or that are, that is being bullied. Features of workplace bullying. Workplace bullying is characterized by repetition. That is, it occurs regularly. From the definition, we found out that it is repetitive in nature. It occurs regularly. You find out that it's not something that the bully does today and doesn't do forever, or does today and then does in the next six months. It comes, it, it occurs regularly. Also, there is escalation. Workplace bullying is characterized by increasing aggression. Today, the workplace bully is on level five. By the following week or by the following month, the workplace bully is on, the same person is on level 10 and then it keeps graduating. Also, it is characterized by power disparity. The target lacks power to successfully defend themselves, you know? The target is vulnerable and is vulnerable only because of the power disparity. We've learned, I mean, we've said that the bully is usually the one at the top. Also, it is enduring. That is the duration. It keeps happening, it keeps happening, and it keeps happening. It keeps happening, it is enduring. Then we have the attributed intent. Have told us that the intent is to paralyze the co worker or to humiliate the co worker or to intimidate the co worker and make him feel less human. The worst um, situation here is that in the workplace, people have advised us, they've given us worst advices, worst pieces of advice, they've given us worst strategies. And what do they tell us? They'll tell you, ignore it, ignore it, don't talk. You know, you are just a line a manager. You know, this person is a, a director and they keep on giving us such advices and we hold back, you know, we, we try to like, okay, I'll keep coping. Also, they tell us, don't speak up, oh, don't speak up, be quiet. You don't confront somebody at the workplace. You don't, don't expose yourself. And another piece of or wrong advice that we get in the workplace is try to get along. Just play along, just play along. Very soon, HR will redeploy you from here. HR will post you out of town. Very soon, you get out of this environment. And then they'll tell you, just try to get along. Hence, the bully keeps on enjoying himself. He's having a good time in the workplace. Forms of workplace bullying. It can occur in a variety of contexts, forms, or tactics. We have physical intimidation, which is characterized by pushing, shoving, blocking. It's physical. You see the bully boss coming, and everybody is afraid. Everybody is like walking on eggshell, like we said. 
is also characterized. I mean, this, this another form is the verbal abuse. Here is the bully yelling, passing insults, and pulling down. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't really care. He doesn't really care about how you feel. Verbal abuse. And they can say anything. They can say anything. I remember a, a, a bully boss telling me some time ago, you know, he said, you are doing more physical than mental. After I've had a stressful day at work, you know, that is an insult to my personality. And another form of workplace bullying is exclusion. We have social ex exclusion. We have professional isolation, whereby the target is excluded socially, is excluded professionally. When opportunities for training come, you see the bully boss say no. This lady is not going this time. She's going to wait. And then you are excluded. You are excluded for so many reasons. Another is sabotage. Coming? Okay. Oh, my slide, my slide, where are you? I lost my slide. I was trying to, I didn't want to see the comments. Okay. Wow, what's happening? I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Wait. All right. So, sabotage, undermining work or professional reputation. Then we have work interference. We'll get to see what these are all about. Sources of workplace bullying. Sources could be, you know, workplace bullying can emanate from the employers themselves, like the employer management. We have co-workers, and who are the co-workers? You have the supervisors, line managers, team leads, team members, peers, subordinates, colleagues. Those are your co-workers. The bullying, workplace bullying can emanate from them. We also have external sources. We have customers, contractors, clients, suppliers, retirees, ex-employees, members of another company, members of the public, and so on. Now, we need to know some facts about workplace bullying. And these facts have been proven. Number one is that women are the greater victims of workplace bullying. Women are the greater victims of workplace bullying. Then there might be one target or a group that has been established that it could be a target in a department or a group of people within the same department or within departments. They could be isolated for whatever reasons. And I've told you that bullies don't bully people that are you know, low performers. They target the eye flyers. They target the sort of the earth people in the workplace. Then bullying actions or tactics can be covert, that is sub two, or overt, obvious. The bully can decide to operate in a covert way. He smiles when external people are there. Maybe other people from other departments come. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, please see Miss Jane. Miss Jane, she will assist you. Immediately they leave, it becomes something else. Or it makes a nice comment about Miss Jane, but it does the other um, thing when those people are gone. Bullies can often be charismatic and tend to collect collaborators around them. You know, they are good to other people in other departments. They are, they are nice to them. They are respectful to them. And they get along very easily with those other people. But with the people around them, in their circle, in their teams, they don't, they don't give them good life in the workplace. Then there might be a single perpetrator or a group. A group of line managers can come together, two or three line managers, to bully people in the workplace. Prevalence of workplace bullying. Now, these key points are from the 2021 WBI US survey. That's the Workplace Bullying Institute. 
the survey that was conducted in 2021. And in that survey, it was discovered or it, the outcome was that 19% 19, 19 of US adults witnessed abusive conduct at work, 19%. Then 4.1% of respondent or respondents admitted to being a bully. 4.1% of respondents admitted to being a bully. 49% of US adults have been affected by bullying. And 30% of US adults reported directly experiencing abusive conduct at work. 66% of US adults are aware that workplace bullying happens. I know there will be data too in Nigeria, but I didn't have access to that. So I used the one from the WBI US survey. And somebody might want to ask, does bullying affect people who work remotely, the remote workers? Yes, it does. Again, from the, from the report, from the research by the WBI, it says the 43% remote worker bullying rate was recorded with sources of bullying being 50% in virtual meetings and 9% by emails. I'll take that again. The for 3% remote worker bullying rate was recorded with sources of bullying being 50% in virtual meetings and 9% by email. So the remote worker is not exempted. Now, how can a remote worker experience bullying? It would be through cyber bullying, exclusion from virtual meetings, discussions or decisions, belittling, belittling comments, receiving condescending or demeaning feedback on work or ideas, unfair, unjustifiable criticisms, then gaslighting. And somebody might want to ask, what is gaslighting? It's a form of psychological manipulation and emotional abuse where someone makes someone question their own sanity, their memory, their perception. You know, when you are made to feel like a fool, that's gas li gaslighting. When somebody makes you feel like a fool and you know, it's like, it's questioning your, your sanity, that's gaslighting. Then we have microaggressions, which could be sub, which is subtle unintended comments or actions that demean or belittle. We have virtual rumors. We have technical sabotage. We have overwork or overload, and then we have lack of support. Now, types of workplace bullies. Types of workplace bullies. I'm, I'm very sure you would like to know the types of workplace bullying, the bullies, because I want you to mirror it down to yourself. Like, put a mirror in front of you and see is this me? Is this me? So we have the blatant bully. The blatant bully is a screaming insulter. A boss who manages by fear. You know, immediately he comes in, his voice alone commands, not respect now, but fear in the hearts of people. They make belittling comments or talk over someone in a meeting. They want their way. They always want their way and they want you to know they are in control. You know, it's either him or nobody. It is when, when he speaks, everybody, you know, everybody rests. Nobody speaks. They want to know how important they are. And it does not matter who they have to step on to get their point across. That is the blatant bully. And a bully once said in the workplace, if I cannot crush that person, then I'll bypass that person. Those are the kind of comments that the blatant bully makes in the workplace or in the department. Then we have the passive aggressive bully. The passive aggressive bully. They may tell you one thing and tell others something completely different. This obviously can feel like sabotage. This person will smile 
and give an offhand compliment that will make you, you know, leave you wondering, to make you keep wondering that, ah, you know, somebody he has told you, oh, you're doing well. I love your report. And then a line manager, another, his colleague that is also a line manager comes to his own office and he tells the person the other thing. And maybe that person by chance sees you and then gives you that information. You know, you keep wondering, these are two opposite um, behaviors. These bullies know what they are doing. And the problem is they are doing it in a subversive way that keeps a while to detect. And that's the passive aggressive bully. It's like the two-headed snake bully, you know, somebody that has like a chameleon in the workplace. They say something, they act the other way. They say something, you can't really, you know, you can't owe them by their words. That is the passive aggressive bully. Then we have the overly direct bully. Direct people are quick, aggressive, and unfiltered, which over time can seem like bullying. Sometimes they get away with this behavior because that's just how they are. How they say things can be perceived as harsh and disruptive to team morale. These people may be perceived as bullies, but it is usually not their intention to bulldoze the rest of the group. So these overly direct bullies are not entirely bullies, but you know, there are these kind of people in the workplace that they don't really mean it. It's not their intention to make you feel uncomfortable or to make you feel abandoned or helpless or have this kind of unsafe feeling, but you know, they are just who they are. That's just how they are. They are strict and then they just do their own thing and their minds are off it. You know, they don't hold on to it forever. Like, I don't like your face and I don't like your face forever. Once they pass these comments, oh, this work is not well done. You have to redo. Or this report is not, it's not it didn't capture what, you know, they pass their comments and that's all. So these are the overly direct bullies. Now, there are other types of workplace bullies. We have the credit taker. These are bullies in the workplace, but people in the workplace that you do the work, the team members do the work, but they want all the glory, they want all the credit for themselves. And then they are, they are happy that the credit is coming to them. They enjoy that, those accolades, they enjoy the, you know, the, the comments that people pass about what has been done. And they don't give it back to, I mean, they don't channel it back to the team members. Then we have the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper is also a bully in the workplace. This is the subordinate employee, you know. They are junior staff in the workplace, junior and uh, lower cadre employees, but they can grind everything to a halt. They strike on the most opportune time. They deprive people of opportunities. They inflict injuries or on others indirectly. These are the gatekeepers, you know. They are, they are workplace bullies and they are not the middle level uh, employees, they are not the C suit employees, but these are younger and lower cadre officers, lower cadre employees, but they have ability to grind everything to a halt. If it keeps a document, everybody keeps searching and then it keeps quiet. Then we also have the cyber bully. This happens a lot in the social on the social media page. And then we have people who work remotely also having cyber bullies, you know, the line manager or the the a, so a superior officer or the superior employee bullying them remotely. Then we have the workload bully and so on. The list is actually endless. Now we go to the examples of bullying at work. Examples of bullying at work. Spreading my, oh, sorry. Spreading malicious rumors gossips or innuendo. We have people who are major in this. They are experts in this. They go about peddling rumors within the workplace. 
is an example of workplace bullying. Then we have excluding or isolating someone socially, intimidating a person, undermining or deliberately impeding a person's work is also an example of bullying in the workplace. Physically abusing or threatening abuse, removing areas of responsibilities without cause is also a form of, I mean, an example of workplace bullying. Constantly changing work guidelines, establishing impossible deadlines that will set up the individual to fail, establishing impossible deadlines that will set up the individual to fail is a form, is an example of workplace bullying. Withholding necessary information or purposefully giving the wrong information. You have your new hires and then maybe you want to mentor one of them or you've chosen to mentor one or to coach one of the new hires and then you are given or withholding information, given the wrong information, or withholding unnecessary information, I mean, or not sorry, necessary information is an example of workplace bullying. Making jokes that are obviously offensive by spoken word or email is an example of workplace bullying. Intruding on a person's privacy by pestering, spying, or stalking. You know, here is this person that comes to your office every now and then without being invited is an example of workplace bullying. Then assigning unreasonable duties or workloads which are unfavorable to one person in a way that creates unnecessary pressure is also an example of workplace bullying, you know? Your manager could tell you, do this. You, you're not done with it. I know it's good to multitask, but you're not done with it. And it's also assigning another duty to you, especially when there are other people around that can take up those duties. That is an example of workplace bullying. Underwork, creating a feeling of uselessness. There are, there are leaders, there are managers in the workplace that will just leave you, like keep you redundant. Is an example of workplace bullying, yelling or using profanity. You know, there are bosses, there are, I, I won't call them bosses now, maybe uplines, you know, in the workplace that enjoy raising their voices. And I've come to understand that if you want to talk in the most respect, respectful way, you don't talk beyond your nose. You don't talk be, or you don't speak beyond your nose when you're talking in the workplace. You don't have to raise your voices above your nose or your noses. Criticizing a person persistently or constantly is an example of workplace bullying. When all you do is, oh, this is not good enough. Oh, this is not good enough. Oh, this is not good enough. There should be room for mistakes. There should be room for correction. And that is how the person gets to do it better. But by the time you don't give the person enough space, to, 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 to redo or to, to learn or to unlearn or to relearn, then you are a bully boss or you are a bully leader or a bully manager. Belittling a person's opinion is also an example of workplace bullying. Then unwarranted or undeserved punishment. When you just choose to punish somebody in the workplace, it might not be physical or corporate, you know, is the work, it could be an, a kind of executive way to punish people is also an example of workplace bullying. Then blocking applications for training, leave, promotion, you know, all those little incentives, little things that can motivate an employee in the workplace. But because you, have, you are a bully yourself, you just block and say, no, she's not going. We're not sponsoring her, the organization. You are not even recommending, yes. You are not recommending this employee just because you don't like his or her face or just because, oh, please, you know, for no reason. You just want to humiliate, you want to belittle, you want to make that person feel uncomfortable. That's who you are. Then tampering with a person's personal belongings or 
work equipment is also an example of workplace bullying. Now, there was a research by Clark and Rita, 2018, that also provides examples of uncivil, harmful, and abusive behaviors in the workplace. These are examples of bullying at work, profane, threatening, or disrespectful language, or any form of verbal abuse is an example of workplace bullying. According to them, they also said that retaliation against a whistleblower is also an example. We have routinely making uncomfortable or unreasonable assignments. We've said that using position or authority to talk down to or demean, demean another. We have deliberate exclusion of individuals from meetings or activities that should be attending, that they should be attending. We have comments that have a negative effect on work performance. Like the one I said, the one I mentioned, my own personal experience. Then we have harsh criticism in the presence of other employees. This is also an example according to these scholars. Shunning, excluding, marginalizing, or using the silent treatment. There are leaders in the workplace that enjoy the silent treatment. You know, they give it to you hot. But it can be cruel. It can be, you know, cruel and bizarre in the workplace when they give you such treatment. They're not providing important assignment related information. We've said that circulating private correspondence, you know, emails, messages, texts without permission is also an example of workplace bullying. When you take somebody's document with another, you know, something that should be in the person's file or that is not, is for is a private correspondence or you get a mail and then you're forwarding it or you are blind copying somebody, you know, in the workplace, it's not right. Then rude nonverbal behavior and or gesture eye rolling, sneaking, finger pointing, very bad. Staring, very bad. Then setting someone up to fail. We already said that. And the list goes on. Gossip, mongering, or rumor spreading, interrupting, taking credit for the work of another. We already said that. Telling personal jokes about a co-worker, not nice. How can a bullying, how can bullying affect the workplace? How can bullying affect the workplace? Bullying affects the overall health of an organization. The overall health of an organization. If it's bullying within a department, that department can, can translate or become a toxic place to work if care is not taken. It could be an unhealthy place to work. It could be a hostile department to be in. So there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an overall effect on the workplace, on the end, organization. So an unhealthy workplace can have many effects as a result of bullying. And these effects include increased absenteeism, increased turnover rates, increased stress, Increased cost for employee assistance programs, that's EAPs, recruitments, and so on, because if people are tired by the time they are frustrated, you know, they've 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 gone through so much, they will exit the organization and it will take a lot to bring them, I mean, get new hires. Then we have increased risk for accidents and incidents. We have decreased productivity and motivation, decreased morale reduce corporate image and customer confidence. We have poor customer service. Those are the effects on the organization. Those are the effects on the department. Bullying is a workplace hazard. There is a risk to the head that's when somebody, I mean, an employee is experiencing 
workplace bullying, when an employee is experiencing this bullying, it has a lot of effects on the employee. I mean, it has so much effect that, you know, you are not yourself. You are, you are, you are coming to work, but you are not yourself. I remember when I had that experience, I used to have palpitation. I hated going to work. Once I get to the main gate, I'm like, God, why am I here today? And it needs to stop, bottom line. Effects of bullying on the individual. People who are the targets of bullying may experience a range of effects. These reactions include shock. You are surprised. You know, when it's happening for the first time, you are like, oh, can this be, can this be real? You are wondering, you know, the day, <laughs> I won't call him a leader, the day a manager said, but I'm, I'm trying to be careful because this happened many years back. You know, he just said, are you out of your mind? And I'm like, wow. I'm very sure that cannot happen any longer because I'm wiser now. You know, I was shocked, but I kept quiet. Feeling of frustration and or helplessness. That's the effect, you know. You are helpless because there's power parity. There's, this is a boss. This is a superior officer. So you cannot talk back at them. You cannot confront them. Most times you cannot even say anything. So you are helpless. And even telling your, I mean, speaking to your friend or colleague does not even help because they will give you those advices I mentioned. Ignore him, just play along, you know, all those things. Anger. We did you. You are angry. You are angry. That is also an effect. Then we have increased sense of vulnerability. Because it happens regularly, it happens frequently. You don't even know when the next episode will, will come up again. You are in the workplace, you are in your department, you are in your unit, and then you are even expecting it. You become more vulnerable. You become more, you know, you are, you are, you are on the weaker side. So it increases your sense of vulnerability. Loss of confidence. You know, here you are before this, person and you are jittery. Here you are before this person, you are, you are just there. You are not yourself. Loss of confidence. Even when you know the answer, you don't know what it will say. You don't know what to expect. So employees keep on suffering in silence. You keep on suffering in silence. Then there, there are the physical symptoms, such as inability to sleep, loss of appetite, you know, some people even lose weight because you are just overwhelmed by thoughts of, why me? Why is this happening? I'm helpless. There is also the psychosomatic There are also the psychosomatic symptoms. You know, you are not sick naturally. You are fine. You don't have any medical condition. But you're having stomach pains, you know, you're having aches in your in your tummy. Some people even, you know, headaches. Your head is banging, you're having migraine in the workplace. And then there's fatigue. Not because you are nursing a particular illness, but these are psychosomatic symptoms that you, you get to experience as a result of bullying in the workplace. Then family tension and stress, you know, the family is where we belong. So when you leave the workplace and get home, you are going to meet people within your family space. You are going to meet people within your household. And here you are, you know, giving it to them, transferring aggression on them. So that is also um, uh, another effect. Then we have panic and uh, panic or anxiety. Thank you. Somebody just said anxiety especially about going to work. I mentioned that to you. Driving and then getting to the main gate, I'm like, gosh, I'm here again. I just hope that today will be better. 
And it got to a level that I had to tell my husband, it's like I'm going to resign because I couldn't push it any further. Every day was hell. Every day was hell with a bully boss. So panic is there. You are afraid. You don't even know what to expect. You don't know the kind of comments it will make. You don't know the kind of assignments it's going to give you. Things that you cannot, you cannot finish. You know, deadlines that are, you know. <laughs> so we also have an ability to concentrate. You know, when you are not yourself, you are not yourself. And then you cannot concentrate. You are just there. Loofing, you are just there, you know, you are just there, absenteeism, inability to concentrate. Then we have low morale and productivity. Thank God for, thank you very much for that comment, reduce self worth. Yes, thank you. So, low morale and productivity, we have fight, flight, and fight. Is either you take your leave, that's the last option to say, okay, I'm, I'm tired, I'm done. Thank you, IBP. I can see IBP. So it's either you take your leave and say, okay, I'm going, or you decide to confront the bully boss. Those are the effects that you get to experience in the workplace. And I'm very sure that some of you on this call, depression, thank you very much, have experienced these effects from um, at one point or the other. What are the survival tips for dealing with a boss, with a bully boss or a bully? Thank you, low self-esteem, I can see that. Now, survival tips for dealing with a boss or a bully, sorry, with a bully. Stay calm and maintain your professionalism. I think that helped me a lot. I never confronted that bully. I never said anything. I was calm, thank God for CIPM, you know, Professionalism is a core value in CIPM. It's part of the script, the acronym script. So stay calm and maintain your professionalism. Do your work. Make your submissions. Make your deliverables. And just be calm. That's the first level. Be calm and then maintain your professionalism. Then avoid reciprocating or confronting the bully. I tell you, it does not help. Confronting the bully leads to more problems, you know. Standing up to a bully leads to more, you know, the conflict, it will lead to conflict. And, you know, this bully already has his own circle. He has support, you know, not support because of what he's doing, but because he's a friend to the high and mighty in the workplace. So <laughs> just avoid reciprocating or confronting the bully. Then limit how much you interact with the bully. As much as possible, stay within your space. As much as possible, avoid interactions. I never went in except he called me, except he needed my attention. I was helpless. But except he said, go get this person, or he called me on phone, I would never leave my office to go and you know, hang around where I could easily be spotted. Then limit how much you interact with the bully. Okay, I've said that. Then document the behavior that i did not do but i'm i mean i'm wiser now you must document the behavior you must document it you don't ignore any form if it's recording record if you are going into the bully's office or you are around the bully put your phone on record and get or you can even write you can have notes on you know keep records then find strength in numbers Make sure you have your witnesses, people around you that could say, okay, we, she told us, or we also cited it, or we have, we are in the know, have, and find strength in numbers. Then what can an employer do? The most important component of any workplace prevention program is management commitments. Management commitment is best communicated in written in a written policy. There has to be a policy. Management has to buy in to having policies against workplace bullying. Since bullying is a form of violence in the workplace, employers may wish to write a comprehensive policy that covers a range of incidents from bullying and harassment to physical violence. That is key. 
Also, what can the employer do? Precisely state the consequences of making threats or committing acts. Outline the process by which preventive measures will be developed. Encourage reporting of all incidents of bullying or other forms of workplace violence. Money in that policy, there has to be provision for reporting. Like apart from whistleblowing, you should be able to come up and you know report it. Outline the confidential process by which employees can report incidents and to whom. That also must be there in such a way that they know where to go. They know who to meet. Also, assure no reprisals will be made against reporting employees. There should not be any, any sanction. There should not be any form of um, victimization. Then outline the procedures for investigating and resolving complaints. There has to be procedures for reporting. I mean, for uh, you have to outline procedures for investigating and resolving complaints. Then describe how, sorry, these points are, these comments are distracting me. Okay, describe how information about potential risk of, okay, what's happening? I'm sorry, the comments are disturbing me or distracting me. Okay, describe how information about potential risk of bullying or violence will be communicated to employees, then make a comment. Provide support services, support. We talked about EAP. Also, a workplace violence must be in place such that must be developed by management and employee representatives, must apply to management, employees, clients, independent contractors, and anyone who has a relationship with your company. Then define what you mean by workplace bullying. That's program of or harassment or violence in precise concrete language, then provide clear examples of unacceptable behaviors and working conditions. Also state in clear terms, your organization's view towards workplace bullying and its commitment to the prevention of workplace bullying. You know, that program must be such that nobody is exonerated it should apply to management, it should apply to employees. Everybody, all stakeholders must be captured. Now, what are the roles of the HR manager? Because it, we all know that, I said at the intro that HR, you know, HR does not do anything. That's what people know in the organization. Okay, if I tell HR, HR will not do anything. But we have to change the narrative now. HR must watch out for sudden drops in performance, engagement, or attitude, as this is usually the first sign that someone is being bullied. Any marked change in team dynamics, particularly after a new employee has arrived, should be investigated immediately. Within your workspace, once you notice a sudden drop in performance or attitude or engagement, you must give support at departmental level as an HR manager. Then don't ignore employee complaints of workplace bullying. Don't say, oh, please go and rest. Don't talk. Let's just hope and pray that it changes. A bully never changes. Most times, a bully never changes. Encourage employees who, are, who feel bullied to stay calm and maintain their professionalism, avoid re reciprocating or confronting the bully, limit how much they interact with the bully, and then document the behavior. HR should encourage employees to do this. Then have a workplace policy and a process in place that includes a reporting system. HR is the driver when it comes to 
this issue of um, workplace bullying. Also understand the legalities of workplace bullying. Try to work out solutions before the situation gets serious or out of control. Because when push comes to show, it could become, I mean, a, a litigation case. It could, it could be serious, it could escalate. Then create a bully-free culture. And how can HR do this? Encourage everyone at the workplace to act towards others in a respectful and professional manner. This is central because we spend a lot of time in the workplace. If we don't have respect for one another, if we don't create a positive environment to work, I mean, for where respect thrives, then bullying will also, you know, take place, you know, bullying, workplace bullying will keep on thriving. Then educate everyone that bullying is a serious matter. Educate everyone about what is considered bullying and whom they can go to for help. Treat all complaints seriously and deal with complaints promptly and confidentially. HR should be confidential when there are cases, when there are cases are reported, should not, you know, it should be treated confidentially. Gun All your information, align them together, analyze them, and then you can take it off from there. Train supervisors and managers in how to deal with complaints and potential situations. Training is essential. The supervisors, line managers, middle management, top management, everybody should be orientated. Everybody should be trained on how to manage and to handle complaints and potential situations. Then encourage them to address situations promptly, whether or not a formal complaint has been filed. Then have an impartial third party help with the resolution if necessary. Sometimes you need to consult. HR needs to consult. Now, do not, do not ignore any potential problems within the departments, within the organization. Do not ignore any potential problems and do not delay resolution at ASAP. Can you imagine a bully-free workplace, one that promotes innovation of new ideas, where teamwork thrives, you know, where you are, you are good, you feel good going to work. You know, I feel good going to work now. I enjoy myself. I have supportive leaders. I have supportive managers. I have people I can sit and in dialogue with now. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot better. I feel a lot better and I feel satisfied. I feel fulfilled working. I feel excited going to work and I could work extra hours because I enjoy what I do. I work in an atmosphere that promotes positivity. And then for the remote workers, a bully-free becomes a pleasure. You are working remotely and you are enjoying yourself. Just to recap all that we've said, develop policy statement that addresses workplace bullying and harassment, develop procedures for reporting and how they would be dealt with, get the facts always, get the facts always, then train supervisors and workers. Conclusion. Workers must report it when they see it or experience it, and employers must act. And I want to leave you with this quote. I love this woman so much, Maya Angelou. I have learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. People will never forget and feel.
even in the work. On that note, I say thank you for your attention. And I would like to hand over to Dr. Oluyemi Adioshun for questions and answers. Over to you, sir. Wow, wow, wow. That was fantastic. That was a fantastic session. Ladies and gentlemen, let's show some appreciation. Let's express our thoughts with respect to how we feel right now from a knowledge perspective, from information perspective. Wow, that was a masterclass. Thank you so much, Mrs. Onipede. That was excellent. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know how we roll by now if you are a first timer at this intersection. If you like to ask a question, like to share your experience, have a comment, please, this is the time to raise up your hands so that we can recognize you and you can share your voice. We don't bully here. We allow people to express their own you know, voice, feeling, thoughts, or ask their questions or, or clarification. But let me just sound a note of warning because of the nature of the organization. Please don't mention the name of any organization. And please don't mention the name of any individual. Okay, so in this context, you can code that you, you know a company. You understand? Or I know somebody. Please, eh, we don't want to go to court and meet with anybody and uh, this recording will be the evidence in court. I'm speaking from experience, real life experience from this platform. If you know, you know. Yes, I see, see three hands already. A quick succession. We will take Fumi first. Fumi, you go first. Then we take Bukola after and Moronke, Moronke subsequently. Fumi, you have the authority to please unmute, please. You can also drop your comments or questions in the chat box. I already see one from Sedin Doyo. We'll come back. Let's quickly take the voice contribution. Okay, Morunka, you can go, Morunka. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma. Thank you so much for this wonderful session uh, because that's my mentor. I really appreciate you, ma. It's a great time. It's a great time. I have to leave where I'm doing to come and join this uh this live uh presentation, ma. Now, in the situation whereby the bullying is coming from the managing director of an organization, what do we do as an HR? Thank you, sir. That's my question. Okay. You can, can I respond? respond or, hold on. Yes, ma'am. You can respond. Okay. Okay, fine. Fantastic. Yes. Like I said, in the, in the list I gave you about the sources of workplace bullying, it could be from management. And, you know, when it is now the owner of the organization that is bullying you, or that is the bully now, you still remain professional. Do not confront anyone. Documenting it. It only gets to you and report it. You should report to it. Keep reporting to HR. However, if it, if it becomes a threat, like threat to life, if, if it starts to affect your, your personality, your health, your, your safety at the workplace, that is when you can now maybe get a lawyer. You can get a lawyer and then report. But... I think at that point, because, and then the final option is just the exit strategy. You have to keep um, quit that organization. So please remain professional. Do not confront anyone. Do not I mean, abuse. Do not use um, languages that are strong. Is your employer. And another thing that you can do again is to get somebody that is close to your, to your, to your manager or to the owner of the business, maybe a friend that is close to the owner of the business, and then pour your heart to the, to the person and see if the person can come in because this is also about counseling. You can get somebody that can come in and let this person see the reality that, look, one of your employees is not finding it funny any longer. So that's my recommendation to you. Get a friend, get support from an external person that is close to the owner of the business. Thank you. Thank you so much for that response. Bukola, you have the floor, please. Yes, thank you very much. I want to say thanks to uh, the speaker, our Mabel Olosi Branch Chairperson, 
Thank you very much for your well delivered paper. Um, I just want to chip in one or two things, and I also have a question. You know, from the definition that our speaker gave us, um, you know, I am speaking from Japan. I want to relate bullying a little to what obtains in the well, in the okay, maybe in Africa, for instance. You know, in the Western world, which I don't, I'm not the only person in the diaspora anyway. You know, in the Western world, what we term as bullying here is what more majority of us do there in Nigeria. I'll give you instances. I want to give live applications now. You know, here, people mind their own business such that when you meet somebody, you greet, the person doesn't want to respond. You know, that is, if you are, if you are trying to force somebody to respond to your greeting, that is the beginning of bullying here. You know, because they believe that mind your own business, let me be on my own, be on your own. You know, it's like when you come to the workplace, you know, it starts from there. And of course, I also have uh, witnessed that back in Nigeria when I was working with IIT, you know, we have some of our um uh, experts then, That's they true. don't appreciate you greeting them sometimes, you know. And with, of course, African culture believes that you must greet somebody. If you are greeting somebody by force, it's already part of bullying. As it is seen here in the Western world, you know, in organizations, you know, sometimes when you, if you are not going to be a, a bully boss, that means we need to study each of our staff employees to know what one likes and what one dislikes. Let me give you an instance. Back in Nigeria, I remember we had a staff in one of my organizations where I worked that she got pregnant. Everybody began to call her yeah, baby, yeah, baby. You know, it's a common thing in Nigeria. And she detested that. She doesn't like it. But you know that that's what started a uh, um, detest for the organization. She eventually resigned from that organization. She came to me as the head of the HR to tell me that she tells staff to stop calling her that name. She doesn't want it. So what works for one person may not work. Of course, we know in organizations, sometimes we give somebody a nickname. The person will tell you, I don't like it. But because you are the boss, you feel whether you like it or not, that is your name. And we start, to, you know, those are things that make people feel uncomfortable. It should not be done, you know, giving time. And, you know, for instance, they are to, you know, in Nigeria, when you see a child that is sucking maybe his or her finger, maybe the thumb, as a mother mm -hmm. or as a teacher, you want to stop that way of life. And you want to also do like this to that child. You want to put, so that's how I'm, I, I, I on my video. You want to do like this to say that, Stop, stop what you are doing. You are bullying already. You are you are embarrassing that child. That child wants to suck her hand. That is what things they I'm trying to say that here, you don't do that mm -hmm. to a child because once you are doing that, you're embarrassing that child to say, you want to stop that habit, but don't stop it by embarrassing that child to say, don't suck your hand, things like that. And also, please let me also say this lastly, that as HR professionals, please, I also realized recently that when we relate with our children at home. Don't let us go bullying them. That can lead to all that our speaker has spoken about that are adverse effects of bullying, even to the essence of depressing them. You know, Bible talks about something that you don't provoke a child. You know, for father, don't provoke them. So sometimes we want to discipline a child, you know. In fact, in Africa, the way we train our children, most of us, we train them in such a way that they become bullies too. When you shout on a child, you think you are correcting a child, you shout at a child, you, you know, that's the way we grow, almost all of us, that's the way we grew up. And we all also transfer that to our own children. And before you know it, that is why the environment is so harsh, tense, because that's where everybody go. You see everybody just passing aggression here and there. It starts from there. So as HR practitioners, I pray that we'll be able to change the game, even in Africa. The way we train our children, the way we relate most times, it's nothing but bullying. Okay, let mm -hmm. me ask this question now, please. Our speaker spoke about bullying from customers. There is this saying that a customer is a king. And so you must respect a customer. So when you have a bullying customer, please, how do you manage that? Thank you. Okay. Yes. Can I go on, Dr. Luyemi? Yes, ma. Yes. All right. Okay, Ms. Daisy Amaka, thank you very much. If your customer is a bully, the customer is still the king. You have to be professional. And like I said, you can't report your customer to anybody other than for the, to help you. You have to help the customer. 
to get support. Let the customer get support from you, you the HR manager or you the 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 employee now. Let the customer get support. You can counsel. You can call. You can ask people with the customer. I know sometimes customers can be customers can be overwhelmed themselves, especially when their needs or their demands are not met. We just have to make sure that we do not promote it. We do not escalate it. We have to be professional. And professionalism should be displayed in all of our conducts in the workplace. You are raising up your hand again. No, I'm, I mean to lower my hand, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So that's it. You can't send your customer away. You need to think about your bottom line. So you can't, you have to befriend your customer at all times. Even while ab abroad, I know you see these people saying, you welcome, sir, you welcome, sir. Even when, even when policemen are going to arrest somebody, they are at, the, at his door. They are still using, they are still respectful. They are, even when the person leave me alone, get out of my house. They say, please, sir, can you come with us? You know, they are still respectful. It's still part of professionalism. Respect is key. So you must respect your customers. Sure. And don't be aggressive on them, you know. Don't don't let them feel uncomfortable. You cannot help them to heighten it. You cannot make it you escalate it. You must be professional, and then you can support them by getting somebody to speak with them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let me quickly contribute my comments before we call the next person to ask questions or make contribution. And I'm responding with particular respect to customers. Now, there is also an approach to it. So I'll give one or two examples. So assume that the customer is really, really shouting, as in raising their voice, or is very, very, is insultive, using foul languages that we can use on this platform. So you can say something like, Dear Mr. Alex, if I were in your situation, I would be shouting too. If I got mm. this kind of bill, I will be as angry as you are right now. However, in order to help me assist you to resolve this issue, it will be easier if you use a milder tone so that I can sincerely help you quickly as I will be in a better frame of mind to provide you support. However, and then you move it, move on like that. Note, you may say that and they will still say, oh, are you not telling me to, that I'm shouting? Or are you not telling me to shut mm -hmm. up? I say no. Again, if I were like you or in your situation, I'll probably even shout louder than this. But so that I can help you better, mm -hmm. faster. If you, you know, I you know, lower your voice, it will I'll be in a better frame of mind. It's in your interest so that we get this done quickly. And then you paraphrase whatever the problem is and then try and provide uh, the solutions. Note, it may not work in every situation, but a few people, when you say that, they will adjust a little. A few people, it's not a magic formula. Let's quickly take mm -hmm. Fumi, Aki Kumi. Fumi, please. Good evening, sir. Thanks for the privilege, sir. My question is, when the overall boss, you know, she wants us to attend to, but I want to to see the when the overall boss is the one bullying even everybody because he's the open and as a little child when you walk to him and say sir this is we'll tell you are not in the best position to talk to you I work in an academic environment so when the overall boss the register cannot even approach what do you do in such situation? Can I go on? Yes, please. All right, sir. So if the overall boss is the bully now and is unapproachable, I still maintain my point that you need to be professional because you know better and you have to help him. It's like a doctor that is in the hospital and they brought a sick patient. The patient is saying jargons or maybe a pregnant woman that has gone to the hospital. Do you think the nurses will say because of the jargon, they're not going to attend to the, to the patient? The patient is helpless. The bully is helpless. He's doing what he's doing because he's enjoying it, but you have to help him to be better. And that's why we are in the, in the workspace. That's why we're in the workplace. 
sorry, we are in the workplace. So number one is still that you must be professional. I tell you, because anything can happen. If it's a department where they could move you, they could still move you and you won't have much interaction. And like I said, avoid or limit your interaction with such a, a bully, bully leader or a bully boss or a bully, um, I've forgotten what you call the manager or, you know, that person, that person that has constituted himself a bully, avoid interactions. When you don't need to be with him, don't, don't go near him. Just give him his space. Because the moment he sees you, you are his object, you are his target, and he's ready to vent anything on, on you. I have been there. And like I said, I just kept myself. I kept within, I was within my own space. I never went when I was not needed. So still remain professional. And when it comes to somebody that is ahead of you, way, way ahead, or maybe HR is not even doing anything, then you can reach out to people who are closer to this person. The bully will always have a friend. The bully will always have somebody that he, he is close to in the organization. So just reach out to them. I still believe that we must be professional in all of our conducts in the workplace. Don't let us talk back. Very soon, there will be liberation. You'll be liberated. You just, something will just happen and then everything becomes better. But the message for HR now is that we have to put in place long-term strategies. And it begins with the policy development. HR should rise up to the tax of formulating policies for management that will capture this workplace bullying um, as a, a, a construct. And then there must be regular service. And I know in appraisals, we could have 360 um, appraisals such that the subordinate person that is being bullied will also be the one to appraise this bully. It does happen. Then we also, we, HR should pro promote a positive culture within the organization. We should always promote, because culture drives the organization. Once it is thriving in this department and nothing is done, it will move to the next department and then it, it feels everywhere and everybody is just like that, doing whatever they like. There has to be a culture and then we can have, we should have a whistleblowing policy such that people can be bold enough, confident enough to whistleblow incidents or, inc or cases of, workplace bullying. Thank you. Okay, so let me just quickly say one or two things, listening to that question, and just to compliment and corroborate our speaker tonight. You see, especially in owner-managed business, popularly called one-man business, I know that some of them, some of them can be overbearing, but I need us to also put ourselves in their shoes. Because it's a one-man business, all the risk of the business is on them. Sometimes they borrow to pay salary. Sometimes they eat into the capital to pay salary. This can be overwhelming and overbearing. So one of the ways I've approached this on a very good day, note on a very good day, not any day. You must choose that day. It may be in the morning or it may be in the evening respectfully approach this person. Say, again, Mr. Alex is my case study today. Mr. Alex, on behalf of the employees in this organization, we thank you for what you are doing for us. We thank you for your vision, your tenacity and your endurance, your network. We know what you are going through to sustain this business. And we, even though we are individuals and we are professionals and we are privileged to work with you, we celebrate you. However, sir, it's sometimes maybe when the business cash flow is in tight schedule and it is expected, your tempers rise. And when it rise, it affects the employees negatively. Sir, you may not know this because you are at the top, but the mistakes employees make during this period increases. Their level of creativity and innovation reduces. Sir, maybe if you are angry, you can call me, I'm your HR. Be angry with me, but spare the other employees. I will know how to work with the other employees to get them to buckle up and improve their productivity and delivery. If we have money outside so that we can go and chase the money and do debt recovery. Sir, I can't say you shouldn't be angry, but be angry at only me. Spare the other 120 people so that this business can grow and our attrition will drop. 
Again, it may not work every time, but sometimes it works. And you will see them making that. Now you will see that I didn't say, sir, don't shout. I say, it need spare every other person from shouting. Face me. I'm your HR. Most likely, it will reduce or not. The other thing I like to say, especially again in cases of owner managed businesses, where there's no minimal external stakeholders to escalate to, please. You cannot be working with a one-man business and not be very good. If you are not very good, you will be dispensable. So improve your capacity. It has happened to me before that I went to tell the person that, sir, if this happens one more time, I will resign. The man was shocked and he stopped. If you are not good and you say that, you will be fired with immediate alacrity. So again, work with the coalition of the star performers in the organization who can approach this person. It can be in a very relaxed, thank God this Friday setting, okay, or somebody's bad day. And then you say, sir, please, we want to help you. We don't want to, this shout itself will give you hypertension, high blood pressure. In your own interest, sir, please, sir. We want God to preserve you for us. So look for ways. But again, exit is always an option. But please don't exit prematurely. You see, you know, we have emotional intelligence. We have um, IQ, intelligence quotient. There's also adversity quotient. You will notice, thank God somebody joined us tonight from Japan. You hardly will find any Nigerian that was in Nigeria that moved abroad and didn't succeed. Do you know why? They take that adversity quotient from Nigeria to abroad, where life is a little easier. And they get better returns on their efforts. Please also see it as a form of capacity building. I know that some of us, especially the Gen Z, my mental health, my mental health, but some of us got where we are because of the pressure. And that pressure created the breakthrough. You cannot experience a breakthrough if there is no pressure. Please don't always try to, at the slightest provocation, at the lightest irritation, you call it quits. You may be walking out away from destiny. We'll take Mary now, please. Mary, please. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Madam, for your presentation. Uh, mine is just a, a little contribution. I'm coming from the angle of um, when you are being bullied. Also look at the, your value system and the, the, your, your supervisor or the manager's value, carry out a survey in that area. If you can assess that part very well, it will also help you to uh, um, build up the resilience in you. What am I trying to say? For example, you come into a place and your goal is to make some changes for the betterment of the organization, that you can also, you can find some people being against that policy you're coming up with. I am bringing this up from my experience. I realized that I got into a particular organization and there were a lot of things that we were, that were doing that were at the detriment of the organization. So the, most of the time, the MD is not around. My contract stays on reporting to the MD. And number one, they got upset. Oh, why would she be reporting to the MD? So meaning they don't have full control over what I do. And so I realized that I was coming up with a lot of policies which the MD was so happy about, and it was not to their favor. Part of it has to do with, with a reduction of cost. When I get when I bring in a vendor, the the cost they give to me practically way 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 lower. So from this set of um, senior immediately, so it can be business as usual. But what did I do? I, I just told. So I said, you are here for a change. You are a child of light. And so when we stand as against giving in, as against them running away, but just like um, uh, uh, Madam did say, 
I was every of my conversation was very polite because. I think um, network has um, taken her uh, out of the conversation, but this we get a feed of the contribution she was uh, trying to make. Madam, let's quickly just check together through the chat box to see if there's any question that has not been addressed either by your presentation or your response um, so far tonight. I'm checking from my hand. If I see, I will read. You can also please check. Okay, so I see a question from Uncle K. And the question is, what if the bullying is coming from the HR ed and there is no bullying and harassment policy in place? Wow, <laughs> Uncle K. HR, that HR yeah. needs training. That HR needs training and retraining. The bullying should not come from HR. So recommend to management or... I don't know your line of reporting that HR must be trained. HR should not be the, the bully in the workplace. All right. Okay. So I, yes, yes. Is, can we liken bullying to workplace toxicity? Can yes, we liken I, bullying? Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's a, it, it makes the environment, it makes the workplace toxic. It makes it unhealthy. It makes it hostile. Nobody wants to work in a toxic environment. Nobody wants to be bullied. It should not be. That's the bottom line. Bullying should not be encouraged in the workplace. You know, if you've been bullied before in the workplace, it's, it's a terrible thing. If you know what palpitation is, you are coming to work, you are not yourself. You are coming to work, you are not happy. There is no way you'll be productive. So it should not be encouraged, please. Thank you. Okay, the final question I can see here that I will also take from Sadie here. And the question is, how do you manage things when the MD knows a management staff is a bully, but still accommodate them? And the MD is also somewhat a passive bully. Yes, it does happen. It does happen a lot. Like I told you, these bully have their, their strategies. They are loved by others. They have the support of others, but the people within their space or their spaces are the, the, the focus. It could be a group, it could be an individual. So if, the, if they are connected like that, there is nothing you can do. Like Mr. Adi Oshun said, and you know, he gave an example of you could walk up to him in a polite and decent manner and air your views. And I have a friend, she also works in an institution, a tertiary institution. And she had a bully registrar boss. And before, because she was she was always telling me, you know, whenever we, we met, she would tell me, oh, this was my friend. That was, and I'll be like, this is workplace bullying. It should not be. There's no way you'll be productive. There's no way you'll be happy going to work. She had to take it upon herself one day to approach the registrar. And she immediately she got into the office. The woman was like, she gave her that stern look again. Mm -hmm. And she was ready. But my friend was composed. And she said, ma, I've come to meet with you. Can I just have a few minutes? You know, in a soft manner, in a soft tone. And then she heard of you. We love you, man. We want you to make progress. That's what I'm doing. You know, like Ms. Adi Oshun presented to us. And do you know what this woman did? The woman rose from her chair and then hugged her and said, wow, you are a darling. She has never told her that. And that was the end of that bullying behavior. So we can walk up to them. They are not demons. They are not um, satans. It's just a personality that they choose to display in the workplace. And like I told you, children that were bullies in school, children that were bullies in families, bullying their siblings unnecessarily. You know, your baby sister is sitting down, your kid sister is, and just give the sister a knock, and you run into the bedroom. They have grown up to become bullies in the workplace. So we have to help them. You have to help the, you have to help the bully. And part of helping the bully is all that we've said tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Sonic Bade, for your contribution. Um, there is a comment here. I will read and respond. John says, any staff who sees HR action as a bully is not doing the right thing or not following organizational policy. John, I will authoritatively tell you this is not the case most of the time. Maybe 50% of the time. You see, don't let us forget that human resource 
professionals or practitioners are also people. So just like you have nice people and you have ash people, the same way you have nice HR and ash HR. So it is this individual's personality disorder or dysfunction that is trying to, the person theoretically knows he's not supposed to bully. But again, and let me speak this for HR people. So if you are in all your state and your HR is professional, by professional, I mean CIPM member. If it's not a CIPM member, we may not be able to have oversight over that. Report to Mrs. Onipedi. You understand? <laughs> or report to me. You understand? So if you're in anywhere in Nigeria, we have a CIPM, your branch, your chapter, or, yes. or the registrar. You can even send, we have a committee in CIPM, for example, that is called an um, ethics committee. We have a, a, a committee. Send a, an email. If you want your name to be anonymous, say it in that mail that, oh, I don't want my name to be mentioned, but provide facts and figures. It will be investigated. Please don't send a malicious mail. Please don't send a fictitious mail that people, will, professionals will investigate and find that it is, it is false. Provide evidence, provide documentation and substantiation. Let me also say here that we have a few people here and there who bear the title head of HR or HR manager. They are just accidental HR. What do I mean? They were in one function and they were moved to HR. They don't have any certification or qualification. They may have one or two idea about the job. So we also need to be sure that is this person a truly competent HR. Let me now quickly balance it. Professionals, whether MDs or management people, who get results. You see, the way Nigeria is wired, and I'm saying this carefully, you need to be a little dominant to get results. Note, I didn't say you need to be a bully. I said you need to be a little dominant. And being a little dominant may mean you are a little extra forceful, which may, there may be a thin line between that dominance and bullying. Don't forget our theory X and theory Y. One theory says employees are willing and eager to work. The other theory says employees are laid back and unwilling to work. So, personality differences. People who are like, let me use the word choleric. They are result-oriented. Their threshold for excuses is low. But what I want to say here, ladies and gentlemen, because we have to balance this conversation. Human beings are like accounts. An account is assets and liabilities. So when you see bully on the debits or side, on the credit side, you may now see results. That is why it may be difficult sometimes for the MD to chase that management staff. That management staff may be bringing 65% of the revenue for the entire organization. So he may say, let us manage this bullying tendency, but what we now to do is not necessarily to sack that person if it is not out of hand, but to provide an intervention. For example, you can send your management team for executive education in a business school. If your company is buoyant, send them to Harvard. You know, when you go to those kind of places and you meet other people, you even see people who are half your age in executive position, sometimes you will receive wisdom. Then explore your the stakeholders. So these people may be in certain professional association. You may be able to connect with somebody you can report to or escalate to. But let me say this, and this is not a rule, please. This is me as a person. I have gained more as a professional from my, you will see my, I don't know if you can see my hand, inverted comma. So don't let me say bullying leaders. From my mm. tough leaders have forced me to progress more than my good leaders. If I check the progress, if I check when I did a certification, when I learned a skill, it was the tough leader that got me to do it, not the one that was buying me shawarma and pizza. So I love nice leaders, so, and I want to have them all. But sometimes, if I check the milestones in my life, that who pissed yeah. me off that made me to learn, who pissed me off that made me to get this training, who pissed me off that led me to go and upgrade my CIPM, 
It is sometimes those bullies. So sometimes yes. we need to be thankful for those tough leaders. Please, don't let us be quick to label tough, firm leaders and professionals as bullies. And if you are a bully on this call listening, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the social media era. Somebody may be recording you. If they upload all those conversations you're having in the office and put it mm. on CNN or internet, will you still have the face to save? Please save yourself. And if you're an HR professional, save all of us, we, your colleagues, the embarrassment mm. and shame, the shalai. Please let us love each other. Let's work together, but let us ensure the organization survives. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Asking for performance, asking for value for salary is not bullying. I'd like to take closing comments and remarks from Mrs. Omolara Onipede. Thank you for joining us tonight. Your closing remarks. Thank you very much, sir. I just want to charge everyone to please go and promote a bully-free culture in your organization. Promote a positive work environment and then you also preach it and act it. Make people feel good. It, it may not be all the time. Like, you are not going to be that ice cream man at all times in the workplace, but you can make people feel good in the workplace. Let people be relaxed and be ready to work. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, at this intersection, I would like to enable us to unmute so that we can say thank you or something to our facilitator tonight. So you can unmute and say thank you. Let her hear your appreciation. Madam Omolara, mm -hmm. Madam Omolara, mm -hmm. my best. Thank, thank you very thank much, you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much, Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Thank you.